In case of a tie, the winner shall be decided by rock and paper and scissors. So I decree. Amen. Hey guys. All right. Today we are going to learn how to become the Pope by uh, CGP Grey. Now, this is very uh, is to, to become Pope. It determines upon the time period into which one wishes to become Pope. Uh, today, uh, don't. Don't be an American. I, I, there, there will never be a North American Pope, uh, or at least a United States Pope. Um, probably never a British Pope. Uh, essentially, you, the key to becoming Pope here is probably either be from South America, which I believe our current Pope is, or two, Italian. Those are your two options, pretty much. Maybe Spanish. Let's throw, let's throw a Spaniard in there. He might, he might have a chance. Ooh, maybe a southern Frenchman, too. Maybe. Highly, highly unlikely, but a Frenchman has a chance. Probably greater than a, than a British, a Brit, and an American. Um, second option. Go back in time to the medieval times and, uh, be extremely corrupt. There you go. That was the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Remember to hit that like button. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and hear how CGP Grey explains this. Let's say you want to become Pope, I do. head of the Catholic Church, and shepherd to over one billion faithful. Yes. What requirements must you have for this lofty position? First, be a Catholic, and second, be a man. Which seems a little- Ah, fuck. I failed two of the two options. I'm an attack helicopter, and I'm not a Catholic. One of those is me telling the truth. <laughs> And you're not going to believe which. And while it's technically possible for a regular Sunday Catholic to become Pope, the last time this happened was essentially never, because becoming Pope isn't like becoming president. You can't just run for office. Damn it. Selecting the Pope is an inside job, and the men who do it are the Cardinals, and while in theory they can select any Catholic man to become Pope, in practice they prefer to elevate one of their own. The last time a non-Cardinal became Pope was more than 600 years ago, so while it isn't an So the 1400s? Ah, that's not too long ago. ...official requirement, it's an unofficial official requirement. Thus, in order to become Pope, you'll first need to be a Cardinal, and to do that, you need to start climbing the Catholic corporate ladder. <laughs> Step one, become a priest. Yeah, they're corporate. Unlike some churches where you can just fill out a form online and poof, ordained, the Catholic Church treats becoming a priest as a real, you need training profession. So you're going to require a lot of education, usually a college degree Damn in it. Catholic philosophy and then a master's in divinity in addition to your education a masters asking too much qualifications you must also be a man unmarried and willing to remain celibate if you meet these requirements again i fail one of the three options Revealing too much. <laughs> ...and have been working with the church, then you can be officially ordained as a priest, which basically means you get to run a Catholic church or work with another priest who does. But you want to move onward, and to do that, you need to take the job of the man who just made you a priest. Step two, become a bishop. Ah, overthrow him. Yes, lead a coup. Bishops are a much more select group. While there are about 400,000 Catholic priests worldwide, there are only about 5,000 bishops. Damn. While priests get churches, bishops get cathedrals, from which they oversee a number of local churches. To advance your career, you must wait for a bishop in your area to be forced into retirement at age 75 or die sooner than that, freeing up space for you. But you can't just apply because there's already a secret list of potential bishops that's updated every three years based on who the current bishops in your area think would make a good replacement for one of their own. Ah, so you must slander your, your rivals. Beyond that list, in addition to the obvious requirement of being a pious person, you should also be at least 35 years old, have been a priest for at least five years, and have a doctorate in theology or equivalent. You gotta have a doctorate? Jesus! Oh. <laughs> I can't use that. <laughs> Technically, uh... I just, I just sinned, I believe. Right? No. Yeah. Because I used the name in vain? I think that's right. I don't fucking know. I fail all three of those. Assuming you're all these things, your name may or may not be on the secret list. The local bishops then give that list to the Pope's ambassador for your country, known as the Apostolic Nuncio. The Nuncio picks three priests from the list, does in-depth research on them, conducts interviews, and selects the what one he quest? thinks is best. But it's not over because the Nuncio sends his report to Vatican City and the Congress of Bishops who work there reviewing potential appointments from around the world. If the Congress of Bishops doesn't like any of the three candidates, they can tell the Nuncio to start over, returning to the list, picking other three candidates, doing more research, more interviews, and sending off the results. When the Congress of the bishops is happy with one of the nuncio's candidates that name is given to the pope who can reject the candidate and start the whole process over. 
That's a that's a process. Over. It shouldn't be a surprise that from vacancy to a bishop's replacement can take months and on occasion years. But assuming a bishop in your area retired or died at the right time and you were on the secret list of good priests and the nuncio picked you and you made it through his interview and the Congress of Bishops approved you and the Pope didn't veto you, poof, now you're a bishop. Woo. Which is still not on top. The huh. penultimate promotion is step number three, become a cardinal. Despite the fancy name and snazzy red outfits to match, cardinals are not the bosses of bishops. They are bishops just with an additional title and additional responsibilities. The most most notable of which is electing the new pope. The only way to become a cardinal is to get the current pope to appoint you as one, and of the 5,000 bishops, only about 200 are ever cardinals. But let's say your ambition doesn't Damn. go unnoticed by the pope and he makes you a cardinal. Now it's time to play the waiting game for his death or retirement, and with popes, death is vastly more likely. When either happens, the cardinals under the age of 80 are brought to Vatican City, where they are isolated from the outside world, presumably by taking away their cell phones. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What was that under the age of 80? Are brought to Vatican with popes, death is vastly more likely. When either happens, the cardinals under the age of 80 are brought to Vatican City, where they are isolated oh. from the outside world, presumably by taking away their cell phones and tablets and carrier pigeons. <laughs> Once sequestered, the election of a new pope can begin. These elections are never exactly the same because the ex-pope leaves instructions on how he wants his replacements to be picked, but in general- In case of a tie, the winner shall be decided by rock and paper and scissors. So I decree, amen. It works like this. Four times a day, the cardinals go to the Sistine Chapel to vote, and to become pope, one of them must get a two-thirds majority. There's a big dose of mustn't be too hasty here, as the cardinals don't just raise their hands or use a modern preferential voting system, but instead write down one name on a piece of paper, stand before the altar, and say a long laugh. I call as my witness Christ the Lord, who will be my judge, that my vote is given to the one who before God I think should be elected phrase before officially Tim. casting the ballot. Once all the cardinals have done this, the votes are counted and then burned. This is why TV news stations covering the election of Pope use super modern HD live streaming cameras to look at a chimney. If the smoke is black, no new Pope. The high victory threshold and tediously slow voting process is why it takes so long to elect a Pope. It's usually at least two weeks of voting, four times a day, six days a week, with one day a week reserved for prayer. But the What was that? I, I want to see the words. They happen so fast. Dear Lord, please help the others see how wrong they are. For prayer, yes. but the record length is... Vote for a Medici Pope. Get money. Three years. <laughs> Assuming you eventually win the support of your fellow cardinals, you have one final thing to do before becoming Pope. Exile them all. A new name. There's no formal rule, and you can name yourself anything you like, but it's tradition to take the name of a previous Pope. Upon the acceptance of your new name, the final ballots are burned clean to make the smoke turn white and announce to the world that a new Pope has been selected. So that's the career path. Be born into the right half of the population, become one of a billion Catholics, then one of 400,000 priests, then one of 5,000 bishops, then one of 200 cardinals. Wait for the current pope to die or retire and convince two thirds of your fellow cardinals to select you as the one, the only pope. Easy. Ah, oh, it sounds simple. Oh, so simple. I think we can do it. I think we can do it, guys. We've got this. Yeah, there's about, well, 2,000 of you are subscribed. Uh, don't know how many of you are going to watch it. Probably less. So. Well. They, they, there's a video. Uh, damn. I love CGP Grey. I love the, the, like, I guess, I guess it would be dry humor. Because, you know, it, his humor is, it's there. It's funny. But it's not like, he's not, haha, <laughs> laugh, haha, <laughs> you know, I don't know, maybe I'm explaining, I'm probably explaining this bad, uh, so I'm just gonna end the video there, I hope you guys enjoyed, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more, and, uh, comment down below what you wanna see me react to next, and I'll see you guys in the next video, peace.